which brings up the uh, the topic <clears throat> from last October when I, uh, I was invited by Ann Wilson to yes. sit in with the band uh, yeah. at the Net Theater in Seattle. Uh, Ann's manager and my manager, Bro Mike, had been talking, and uh, they suggested to Ann that that this happened, and she did it. She invited me to play, and so th that was such an amazing gesture after all these years because uh, the the phrase "bad blood" is is not correct, but mm -hmm. you could say that there was bad blood between us. There was, there were, uh, you know, there were a lot of things that that we could talk about, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but never did because there was no reason for it. And there was, a, uh, you know, kind of animosity, hostility lingering in the air. So for her to do that was a, a big act. Thank mm -hmm. you. And so we got together at rehearsal yeah. and started, we, we rehearsed the song and her band are so good. These guys are just great. And they're great guys. It was just mm -hmm such a joy to play with them but after we rehearsed the song we went into uh, the lobby of this recording studio where we were re rehearsing and uh the topic came up about Anne's drinking and she told me that uh, her bane was expensive red wine mm -hmm. and that's why she had a drinking problem because she loved it so much i can totally relate uh but she had quit that uh but she uh I, we have our own whiskey. It's called Heart of the Blues Whiskey. And I had a bottle there that night and she said that we could uh, have a toast of the of the whiskey. So we did. And we kind of made a pact uh, that, by golly, we're going to get along. Uh, and she asked me to play on her next album. So that that was great. But when we did the show, uh, that old magic mm -hmm. was was there on mm -hmm. stage. You can go to Ann Wilson's uh, YouTube channel and see a video of that show. You got I'll mm -hmm. also see that on our channel. Yep. But it's really evident that she and I, in particular, having had the history mm -hmm. that we had with that song, brought it, mm -hmm. and it was a uh, God, a really powerful moment. Well, her backing band, I think it's called um, The Amazing Dogs. Yeah. And you guys did Mistral Winds, and which is one of my favorite tunes uh, at the Neptune, Neptune Theater. I'm going to post that. I'm going to post that video. You know, there's no reason why you, sh you guys shouldn't have a reunion. There's story. lots of reasons. Great. Come there's on, you and Grand Funk Railroad. There's no reason, man. I talk to Mark uh, Farner about that all the time, too. And he, you know, he's game. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm game. But <laughs> these pe the other people... Uh, Who's the stubborn well, one in the band? Who's the one that doesn't want to do it? I mean, you're, re you're gonna, reaching Ann. I'm not going to talk about that. Got to be Nancy. Typically. <laughs> <laughs> but well, Nan, yeah, I mean, even Nancy and Ann aren't playing together right now. But uh, yeah, yeah. The 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 people around these people, like the people in Nancy's camp, right? They she gets information from lots of places and is influenced by these other people. I simply wanted to go to see Nancy. Uh, a couple of months ago after Ann and I had played together. Right. I just wanted to, I mean, I had had tickets to the show for a long time. Sure. I just wanted to go to the meet and greet. Oh no, Roger Fisher. Oh, and so I, I was denied access for some reason. Oh, God. So then <clears throat> I went to a different route and was given permission by a different, uh, the dip, uh, a different uh, entity involved in security. Okay, good. I'm back in. So then I get up to the gate where you go in, and uh, just a minute. Let me. They say just a minute. Somebody scurries off, and then they come back in a minute. Uh, I'm sorry. The it, it's been filled up. There, there. We can't allow any more people. They wouldn't let me do a meet and greet with Nancy. That's insane. I know. I mean, it's that's insane. 
it she's being prote- protected from Roger Fisher. Oh my this god! Maniac who probably is armed and wants to take her life. <laughs> Obviously, I mean he's crazy, right? That's horrible. That, That's horrible, yeah, man. It's uh, it's it's there's, there's well, no excuse for that. It really yeah. isn't, you know. Yeah. It's I talk, shame. I I talked to Steve Fawson and Michael DeRozier because you know they they had the heart by heart uh deal going on which is great you know and they got their own Anna and nancy singing in the band so those guys i'm sure they're on board and I, I haven't talked to howard lease is is he you guys on good terms with howard or oh yeah yeah uh, yeah uh yeah so well it's just nancy guys, <laughs> all three of those guys i've heard say yeah would never would never do it oh really they said they would never do it yeah Huh. They're just not interested at all, and I can, I hmm. can, I can support that sentiment. Uh, I don't need to do it. I'm really happy doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And yeah. The the thing that bothers me is that if we did it, imagine how much money we could raise oh for charities. God. Are you kidding me? That alone makes me wish that we could uh, be good models to to society as yep. we should be. Is is our uh, duty as professional I agree. Uh, entertainers mm. to set a good example, and mm-hmm. that would be setting a great example, showing that we have the the balls and the maturity, the professionalism to get together to do provide our service it, exactly to our audience. That's what we. <clears throat> that's what should happen. Mark Farner said the same thing. He said it's criminal that we don't get back together again. You know, he said the same thing, and he says he's up for it. You know, but you know who's stubborn in that band, right? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Mr. Brewer. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, you know, all- I, I, I just want to make some quick points about um, my observation about Hart. First of all, I don't know how Hart continued without you guys in the band and why they got the name, you know, that I don't know how that happened. Is that, is that Michael's fault? He was managing the band. <laughs> well, Michael, Mike, what happened? I can tell the story pretty well. I <laughs> uh, go ahead, Raj. <laughs> well, they were uh, sitting with our uh, accountant, our, uh, the guy that I guess was our attorney, talking about the heart partnership agreement that we're going to create. And Mike and I agreed that it would be good to give Ann and Nance 51% ownership. Uh, at that time, we were their significant others. Yeah. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. You're trying to be nice. I know. Well, trying to be fair. Yeah. And, Big mistake. You know, yeah. Big mistake. Yeah. But yeah, it's quite like that. But uh, <clears throat> it was sort of along those lines. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, see, originally it was Anna and Nancy with the majority <clears throat> ownership. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it was 51%. And then the rest of it was split evenly between all the guys, including myself. Right. And the uh, the rancor and and uh, heated discussions about who should get what between the different members was just so disgusting to me mm-hmm. that I said, okay, look, I'll give most of my share to you guys so you have more, mm-hmm. and then you can all feel good. And they said, okay. So basically, I gave away, um, you know, what a lot of what my percentage would have been, so that right. you could end this hostility among the different guys. Yeah, you just didn't want to fight. And then, you know, but then through the course of uh, attrition, <laughs> and then Nancy got rid of all the other guys and ended up with yeah. the rest. You know, it gets me mad in a way because you guys started the band. It was your band. You know, and and the girls, you know, I, I'll probably never get an interview now with Ann or Nancy for saying all of this. 
But without you guys, the band would have been nothing. I mean, Roger's guitar sound was very unique and in created the sound, the music of heart. It was him that I was attracted to, not, not the girls. It really wasn't. You guys were incredibly incredible musicians, you know, and the way they come across and put Ann and Nancy on a pedestal without mentioning the band upsets me. It really does. Well, you know, they right from the start, uh, when we were still playing clubs and everything, I was approaching, I was courting um, mm -hmm. the guy who was going to become our producer. Right. And he wasn't interested in the band at all. He didn't want any of the band. He only wanted to work with Anne. And, um, you know, but the thing was, is that we wanted a band. So that, that wasn't even something we would consider. We're going to we're going to run yeah. out of time again. But if it does, let's just get back on again. OK, I'm going to edit the whole thing and that'll sure. probably be our last uh, segment. OK, go ahead. OK. You want me to continue? Yeah, go ahead and continue until we run okay. out. Yeah. So <laughs> sorry uh, about that. The band, <clears throat> meanwhile, was becoming more and more popular. I mean, like really popular. And we were writing songs, we were making demos and it became obvious that the band was able to, uh, you know, sell tickets. We were outselling national acts, you know, as mm -hmm. a cover band. And uh, so finally the, the producer guy came around and said, okay, I will agree to work with Roger and Nancy and Anne, and then we'll, we'll use uh, studio musicians for the rest of the guys. Right. And I said, well, you know, we got to have our bass player too. You know, you know, maybe we can find another keyboard player and, and another drummer, but we got to have Steve. And he said, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try it and see how it goes. So we started recording and we used a studio drummer and uh, Howard uh, was a studio musician at the studio and he had worked with us on uh, some of the demos we did. And Howard just fit right in right away. He was mm -hmm. just great. And because he not only could play keyboards, but he could sing and he could uh, play great guitar. Right. Um, and uh, then we went through a whole bunch of drummers, but finally got Michael DeRozier. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of how it came together. Yeah. They, they, they always mention you know, Nancy as you know, one of the best guitar players as, as far as a woman and this and that. And they do the same thing with Joan Jett. And I very much disagree. I mean, she's a good guitar player, but when you compare her to Roger it, or say people like Sophie Lloyd, Lita Ford, you know, uh, Nita Strauss, Bonnie Raitt, come on. <laughs> She gets a lot of recognition for that, you know, and so does Joan Jett, you know, and I, you know, I play some guitar, so I, I know who's a guitar, good guitar player and, you know, Raj is incredible. He really is. So I, I well, just want to give you guys the recognition you deserve. That's all. Well, yeah, but you can't, <laughs> can't really compare Nancy and I, because uh, it's, there, there are two very different styles. I, I can't, play the stuff that nancy plays so does that make me a worse guitar player no i'm just a different guitar player right. and uh you know if you did compare well i mean you can't compare nancy to bonnie Raitt. bonnie Raitt is just so uh, she captures the voodoo that's in yeah. in blues and and oh God, she is so good. Is but good. Nancy's really, really good on a very high, similar high level, but just in a different way. Yeah, she she really is a great guitar player. Yeah, I, it's just that they put her up here all the time, you know, and I just don't just hear, don't, an, don't I don't hear enough down. of Roger Fisher, that's all. <laughs> but that's I'm by on. design, though. See, the universe is keeping the whole Roger Fisher thing <laughs> under wraps, and this is why. Is. 
this is why i just if appreciate I have, you guys i appreciate you guys that's all you, uh, can you well, hear me i can hear you yep i had, i was starting a little story here okay go ahead i'm sorry so the reason that roger fisher is one of the uh best kept secrets in rock and roll is because if i had been successful earlier mm -hmm. i might have self-destructed or something you know <laughs> or become uh that power what power can poison people's minds and cause them to be weird like putin or hitler or you know some musicians and actors and actresses the fame thing just does them in so i'm really grateful that i'm, I'm not that famous uh because what's about to happen uh, in rock and roll is this huge phenomenon, this huge comeback. Mm -hmm. Our music is going to be discovered. For instance, we have the greatest instrumental rock album of all time, and nobody's heard it. So that's about to come out. And, and I could go on like this for way too long, mm -hmm. but if you don't believe in yourself, what can you believe in? <laughs> That's so right. I, I, yeah. I, I believe this fantasy of yeah. a huge comeback for us. Good, good, yeah, good, that, good. That stands for classic rock. Yeah. I know the feeling. I've, I've interviewed probably 2,000 guys. I mean, legends. You know, wrote the book, wrote a couple of books. I'm, I'm going to do three, four, and five series. And, you know, besides the music artists, nobody else has heard of me. You know, I'm in Bradenton, Florida's backyard with all these famous people that I interview, not only rock stars, but celebrities. I just did Rick Barry the other day, NBA star, you know, nobody knows me. <laughs> so, you know, I'm kind of like a, you know, that, I, that's the way the universe works, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of strange. <laughs> you know, Ray, uh, talk about Raj being underrated you know to me it seems like every member of that band is vastly underrated I agree. they're 100%. all that's my so point fantastic. that's my point yeah yeah that's my point and and yeah. play anything she can play any instrument she's right. just so musical and yeah. god DeRocher is just a fabulous fabulous drummer it's just, he really is I agree I agree man I, I just get upset when, you know, you just hear the, the, about the girls all the time and not you guys. And you guys started the hey, band, and, you know. But let's put ourselves in the girls' place. Right. Uh, they're, they're these sisters that have been raised by a Marine Corps officer mm -hmm. and his wife. And they both, oh, our, our kids, uh, come on. Kid, Ann and Nance, come into the living room here and play for our guests, you know. They got started really early and got the taste of, uh, oh, we're talented. Oh, people like us. And, you know, that gets into your system and you become an entertainer at an early age and you've got something. Mm -hmm. So they meet up with the Fisher brothers and this band happens. But in the back of their minds, it's it's them. It's the Ann and Nance uh, duet that is going to get big and so it was always that way we thought we had a band but mm -hmm. in the back of their minds it was always going to be them yeah and 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 if you put yourself in their place yeah, yeah. I, I don't need a bunch of other people just me and my sister let's just do that uh that is one thing we can always count on uh these you know it, life has its funny little things that come up because of the fact that we're humans and we mm -hmm. make mistakes and we're yeah. wacky and yeah and we don't need that mm -hmm. uh we we don't need to horse around with people being unfaithful to us or or uh being out of tune too often you know that there's so many justifications for wanting to get away from these people so let's get away from all of those guys and then we'll be in control of our our, <clears throat> our whole thing yeah so i can relate to that you know yeah. i can understand why they would want to do that why it would seem right and let's just erase 
the history with all those people. So we don't even have to talk about them or deal with them. Yeah. It's just yeah. our show. Yeah. And in our book, <laughs> exactly. it, I, we can go on and on. But I, you know, when you understand a person's motivations, it helps you heal the feelings that you have for them. Right. And I don't want to carry right. around this baggage of disliking right. anybody in the band for any reason. And I yeah. don't. I yeah. understand why everybody is the way they are, accept it. And I'm grateful to be where I am right now, this relatively unknown guy uh, with a beautiful setting of, of his life. Beautiful, gorgeous. With a, yeah. a, a beautiful uh, fiance, mm -hmm. a wonderful dog, and the best brother <laughs> in the world. 